I love sports and like many of you enjoyed watching Terry Bradshaw when I was younger, but enough of that. Here's a bunch of interesting things I bet you didn't know about Terry Bradshaw. Number one, while in high school at Woodlawn High in Shreveport, Louisiana, Terry got to meet Michael Landon. Yeah, that Michael Landon. In addition to being a football star, Terry was also quite good with the javelin, good enough to set the national record with a 245 foot throw. I found this small newspaper clipping to back up this interesting tidbit. Now keep in mind, this would have been the mid-1960s when Bonanza was the biggest thing on television, so it would have been quite an honor for a young Mr. Bradshaw to have his picture made with someone this famous. And I would guess this was the first celebrity that Terry ever met. As a side note, Michael Landon back in 1954 had a 193 foot throw, the longest by a high schooler in the USA in that year so that explains him being interested in Terry Bradshaw breaking a national record for the javelin. Number two, on to college. Terry played at a small school, Louisiana Tech, and started during the 1968 and 1969 seasons, leading his small school to bowl games each year. That team had been quarterbacked the previous two seasons by Phil Robertson. Yeah, that Phil Robertson, the one of Duck Dynasty fame. For personal reasons, Phil chose to not play football at Tech in 1968, opening the door for Bradshaw to become the starter. In this team photo at the time, I bet no one would have guessed that two of these boys would go on to fame and fortune. Do I have your attention so far? Great! Hit that like button and we'll move on to number three. Bradshaw, despite his college success, was not an All-American nor did he appear on those annual Bob Hope Christmas broadcast with the Look Magazine All-Star football players at the time since he went to a small school. This did not keep him from being rated, however, as the top quarterback prospect in the country, which leads us to number four, the coin toss. Both the Chicago Bears and Pittsburgh Steelers had finished with a 1-13 record in 1969, the worst in the league. They didn't have extensive tiebreakers at that time, which led to the coin toss to decide who would get the number one pick. Pittsburgh won the toss and took Bradshaw with that pick. Now, we can only imagine where else he could have landed had that coin toss gone the other way and what type of career he may have had if he had gone somewhere else. Number five. The Steelers had been known for fielding some pretty poor teams for several decades. Quarterbacking the team in previous years was Dick Shiner and Terry Hanrady. And let's stop right here. Let's not have any juvenile jokes about his name either. He should be proud of the name Hanrady. Now, Dick Shiner had a decent season in 1968 after he came over from the Browns actually throwing for 18 touchdowns, which was pretty good in that era. When Chuck Knoll took over in 1969, the quarterback duties were split between Mr. Shiner and Mr. Hanrady. Once Bradshaw was taken in the 1970 draft, Dick Shiner left to be Fran Tarkenton's backup for the New York Giants, while Terry Hanrady stayed with the Steelers until 1975 and actually started several games in place of Bradshaw during those years. Bradshaw responded by throwing six touchdowns and a whopping 24 interceptions during his rookie season. With those horrible numbers, he still managed to go three and five in the eight games he started, which was a pretty good improvement from the one in 13 season the Steelers had had before. Now, we don't know, but maybe Terry would have done better if, instead of being thrown to the Wolves as a rookie, he had gotten to spend some time learning important things from a veteran quarterback like Dick Shine, or, um, yeah, never mind. Number six, Bradshaw has been married four times, including his second marriage to JoJo Starbuck from 1976 to 1983. JoJo was a three-time U.S. pair skating champion and a member of both the 1968 and 1972 Olympic teams. Number seven, back to football. Bradshaw lost his job several times over the next four seasons, 
from both injury and poor play. Others who started in his place included Hanrady and Joe Gillum. Bradshaw got his job back after the first six games of the 74 season and led the Steelers to their first ever Super Bowl, a 16-6 win over the Minnesota Vikings in Super Bowl IX. MVP Franco Harris broke the rushing record that had been set the year before by Larry Zonka. Now, Terry would lead the team back the next year as the Steelers defeated the Cowboys 21-17 in Super Bowl X. The MVP that year was Lynn Swan with all of his amazing catches. But for Bradshaw, the best years were yet to come. But first, we need to be talking about number eight, his country music career. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. A decade before the Chicago Bears were doing the Super Bowl shuffle, Mr. Bradshaw was releasing country albums and having success doing it. I'm So Lonesome in 1976, the title track to that peaked at number 17 on the country charts, and Until You released in 1980, and Here in My Heart released in 1981. Okay, a few more facts to go, and if you've learned something you did not know, share this video with your friends and family. Now, back to football with number nine. No team adapted and took advantage of the rule changes in 1978 as well as the Steelers, who immediately went from a very run-oriented team to having a much more open offense. With relaxed rules on hitting the receivers coming off the line, Brashaw immediately led the NFL with 28 touchdown passes and a trip to Super Bowl XIII. Setting multiple records in that big game, he was the MVP of the 35-31 victory over the Cowboys. Now, leading the team to the Super Bowl again the following year, the Steelers turned it on in the fourth quarter to come back and beat the Los Angeles Rams 31-19, with Bradshaw winning his second MVP award to go with those now four Super Bowl rings. Number 10, unfortunately a career-ending injury. Terry had a significant elbow injury and set out the majority of the 1983 season. Coming back in week 15 versus the Jets, he completed five of his first eight passes with two touchdowns. On the last throw, he felt a ligament in his elbow pop walked off the field to one of the trainers to which he said, it's over. An athletic career has to end for everyone and Terry Brashaw certainly had a great one. So if you like this video, hit like. If you wanna see more of what our research comes up with about other heroes of your past, hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified of those.